Aloha and welcome to our video on shoreline processes and features. In this video, we'll explain the forces that act on the shoreline. We'll describe how erosion contributes to the formation of a shoreline. We'll also see how deposition can contribute to the formation of a shoreline. And then we'll end talking about a way we can stabilize the shoreline. Okay, so let's look at some forces that are acting on the shoreline. Perhaps the most common one is going to be wave impact, and that's just the waves hitting the shore. Um, that constant hitting can cause some weathering, but also the waves moving up and down the shoreline can take away sediments, and that would be erosion. So we can see a lot of impacts of these waves hitting the shoreline and causing the shoreline to change. Now, a little bit less known or a little more subtle force would be abrasion. And that's going to be as these waves are coming along or as the currents are traveling along the shoreline, you're going to be moving sediment with it. And that sediment's going to have the ability to bang into things and break it down and to crunch it out that way. So it's kind of like if you sat on the ocean shoreline and a wave came up, how it's going to move some of the sand with it. That sand has the abrasive properties that it can grind away other materials or itself. And that'll cause some weathering and ultimately erosion will happen with the wave action as well. Now, we also can kind of see wave refraction. What that means is as the wave comes in, it's going to hit these points here first, and then this wave is going to kind of bend around as it travels this way. Okay, so we're going to see a little bit of changes in the way that it's going. It's going to kind of stretch this wave a little bit, so the impact here might be a lot less than it is here because we have a lot of that energy has gone into bending that wave around a little bit. So sometimes we will see more weathering here and then deposition going on here. Okay, And then finally we have this longshore transport and it's from these longshore currents. And that means that as the wave is coming, notice our wave isn't coming straight in. It's coming slightly at an angle and as it continues to do so, it's going to push this water and that's what causes this longshore current. And that can carry away materials. We can see erosion that way or it can change the depositional pattern as well, how that material is being put back down. So let's take a look at some erosional features. Um, here in our picture, we're going to have our normal shoreline here, our coast. And this is a rocky shoreline, so it's going to be kind of a cliff. And what's going to happen is the waves are going to be coming here. Between high and low tide, this is the area that's going to be affected the most. Waves are going to constantly hit here. Sometimes it's going to be the wave smacking. Sometimes it's underwater. And that's going to allow us to have these cuts here. As those cuts continue to grow, we're going to have some overhangs. Okay, we're starting to form a cliff here. We're going to see that this part here can collapse down into the water. And as it does so, the wave action is going to carry it out to sea. And we can start to build these platforms like you see here. And then we also have these wave cut cliffs that are going to get pushed back further and further and further. So we kind of see this when we have a rocky, like a bed rocky type shoreline. All right. Now, sometimes we'll notice some other things. These rocky shorelines can be separated out and you can have this point coming out into the water. Let me change here. We'll come this way. And you can have this point going here and it's going to be embedded in the water. Now, this can get cut from the shoreline, so that's what we'll do here. We'll cut this one out here from the shoreline here. And what happens is, is the wave action is going to go, and as the wave action is going, we're going to see erosion and deposition occurring more here, a little more pronounced, and we end up with something that's going to look like this. And this is going to be our sea arches here. So we can see how that would happen from the waves. As the waves continue, you're going to see a little bit more chopping here, and as that chops here, it's going to cause bigger pieces to go down here. And ultimately, we can end up with just a pillar, which is what we call the sea stacks. So a lot of times, we'll have our sea arches. And as the arches collapse over time, you can see these pieces here are going to fall down into the ocean. And ultimately, it'll break. And we're left with what we call a sea stack. Now, we can also have shoreline features that are caused by this deposition, okay? this laying down of sediment. And that's what we want to look at in these pictures here. Um, we notice the first one we'll talk about is a spit, and these spits here are going to be just kind of like where it continues out a little bit. So if we have a longshore current coming down here, it's going to deposit this stuff, and it gets to the edge of a bay or the edge of a river, and it's going to deposit it here, 
and not so much here because it can flow in and out and around but there's nothing for it to deposit it on to it's going to be deeper water and eventually we can build up these spits and come across now if we have enough of the spits going across then we form what we call a sandbar and the sandbar will actually close off the bay and cause it to form a lagoon and if it's not fully attached then we have what we call a barrier island out here okay so that kind of relates how we get our spits our bars and our barrier islands the next is this tombolo the tombolo is a little bit different and that's where we have this deposition going on here where we're going to build up this sand and instead of making a sandbar that closes a lagoon we're going to have this sand deposition that's going to connect an offshore island to the shore and that's what a tombolo is there so you can kind of see it pictured here here's where we would have had our island and the deposits are going to line up here so it kind of connects an offshore island to the shore with deposits okay finally we're going to talk about stabilizing the shore and that's important because we want to keep our beaches and we want to keep our shorelines we can do this two ways through protective structures or through beach nourishment the protective structures we can build probably the easiest is a breakwater here or a seawall which we'll see here and what that is is that's putting something that's going to be solid in the way the breakwaters generally will allow the waves to break upon them and then the area behind the breakwater is going to be sheltered and protected okay so that's what a breakwater does a seawall is where we're going to build that structure on the shore and that allows the waves to hit something that's not the shoreline okay so it'll protect it that way we can also build a jetty or a groin they're both about the same thing jetties generally are going to be around a harbor entrance a river exit a bay something of that nature a groin is just going to extend out from the shoreline both of them are going to stop this sand movement coming from a longshore current so what will happen is, is as this current is flowing and carrying these waters it runs into these projections and then it'll slow down and that'll cause deposition to occur so we see the sand laid out that way so that's one way that we can actually protect the beach and we can maintain that shoreline the other way is through what we call beach nourishment and beach nourishment is where we will actually bring sand back to a beach so if you look at an area like Waikiki Beach which used to be a swamp there was no sand so they came in and they deposited sand there and they continuously do so to put more sand so that they can preserve a beach that everybody will come to so you can see the financial importance of stabilizing the shore in that example okay that's it for our video as always good luck on your quiz and we'll see you in the next video